Hey guys, Chad here with Diamond Daily Bourbon, and today we're going to be talking about Hemingway Rye Whiskey. So Hemingway Rye Whiskey comes from the Call family. So Jacob Call, formerly known for Green River Distilling. This is a little passion project, I guess you would call it, that he has put together. They sent me this, so stating at the beginning of this review, this was sent to me by Hemingway Whiskey for the purpose of this review. Came in a nice box with this awesome little Ernest Hemingway uh, notebook here. Got some stories in it. Came with a nice gold pen. Really awesome touch. Great packaging. I'm not going to let that sway me, but as you can see, I have already had a little taste of this because I've gotten to the point to where when I do first taste impression reviews, sometimes they've gone good, sometimes they've gone bad, and I, I really want to know what I'm getting myself into. That way I can tell the brand, I appreciate you sending me this but I don't feel like I can put out a positive review or I don't feel like I should put a review up at this time. So I've started doing just a small sip of something just to kind of see my initial thoughts on it at that time. It's not, I'm not diving deep into it, I'm not doing tasting notes or anything or going in heavy on nosings, but I'm just getting a little taste, just kind of see where it will fall, you know, in, in my lineup of things. If something's really great, I'll move it up. Or if there's other items I'll taste that mm, might fall like a month, two, three months later in my, in my, uh, in my queue. Because I've got a queue. I never thought I'd say that. But I have a queue of whiskeys. I've, I'm probably sitting right now at about 12 items. I'm currently waiting to, not waiting, just working my way to review. I only get about one day a week I can sit down and do this. So anyway, enough about that. So Hemingway Rye Whiskey, this is the first edition. They did a limited edition box set that was $150 that came signed by Jacob, Jacob's father and his grandfather. So for those of you who don't know, to tie into this, so this is a rye whiskey blend. It's a nine year rye whiskey, nine year 95.5 from Indiana and four year rye whiskey that was still by Jacob himself. And it's 96% nine year, 4% four year. So let that set in. The limited edition of this signed by you know the grandfather father and jacob 150 bucks the standard edition once that fully releases without the box set and it's not signed i believe it's going to retail for 100 or less or just shy of 100 if not right around 100 bucks there are other brands out there who are doing similar things to this charging two and three times the amount of money so this is finished in a rum seasoned oloroso sherry cask so what that is they take the oloroso barrel and it is seasoned and soaked with rum, and then they added the whiskey in there. So I know seasoning and soaking is kind of a hot button issue and a odd topic for some people, but Jacob's father works for a rum distillery. So they are aging their rum in these barrels. So that's where this comes from. So this is a formerly used rum barrel that once held sherry. Let's go ahead and pour us up. Nice little sample here. And this is also coming in at 100 proof. This is from the Call Library. From 2022 and I'll post it up there let it zoom in so we can get the full details on it again so you guys can see everything let's dive in immediately on the nose getting a little bit of molasses some dried cherry which is a hundred percent rye it's a rye blend so nine ninety six percent nine year rye whiskey with four percent four year rye whiskey the sweetness on this is all coming from that rum, sherry, blend, or seasons of, of the barrel. We got nice molasses, good dry cherry, getting a little bit to hint of that mint in there from the 95.5. Not a lot of dill, but just getting a little bit of that dill. It's That MGP rye is very distinctive. I love MGP rye. I'm not a big fan of the strong dill notes, but when it's just in there, it just kind of accentuates a little bit. It really doesn't, doesn't bother me. Picking up just a little bit of charred oak, and it, it's not a ton of, of charred oak. I assume that's pretty much the nine year just showing through, just the age of the nine year. It's not musty. It's not, well, it is a little funky. You're getting on just a hint of that rum funk, some of that sweetness coming through, but it, it's not overly oaked. You're not getting any anything crazy on there. Let's give it a taste. Just a nice little hint of that, uh, I don't know if you want to call it Kentucky hug, but that nice little whiskey hug, we'll say. Right in the chest. Good medley of baking spices, just a little bit of clove from the uh, the 95.5, followed up by a, a nice sweetness from the finishing. It's not overpowering. It's, it's not you're not getting a lot of that 
dry tannins from the wine. There, is, there are some tannins to this, a little bit dry mid palate. Overall, just on that first initial sip, just kind of letting it bounce around and touch all the parts of my mouth. 100 proof is exactly where this needed to be. If they would have gone any higher, I feel like you would have lost some of the finishing aspects of it. And I feel like if you got any lower, you would have lost a lot of the whiskey, like that nine-year-old, the depth and the complexity of the nine-year-old in there. I'm sure the four-year was added to just to give it a little hint of, not necessarily youth, but the, a four-year-old rye is going to bring in some of that earthiness, some of that sweetness. You're going to get more of those floral components, which I'm picking up on the finish. As it just sits on my tongue, I'm getting some of that green tea, a little bit of honey in there, getting some of that lemon from the nose transferred down onto my palate. And it's got this gr that dry cherry, that berry, that dry berry note is just really sings through mid palate. It's, it's just kind of like taking a taking a bite of a berry, and you're only you're getting just like a touch of of that juice from the inside of the berry, but it's not sweet, it's not bitter. There is some, there, like I said, there are some tannins coming from that nine year old rye, and you're getting more of that charred oak on the, on the palate, some dark chocolate. You have the dark chocolate, the lemon, the dry berry, the tea, that slightly sweet, a little bit of hint of the funk from the rum is in there. And it's a, it's very weird because like the sweetness that I'm getting off of this isn't like a dessert sweetness. It's almost a candy, but I can't just say like it is this candy because there is a berry sweetness. There's the, the, like the slightly bitter dark chocolate. Finish is nice. It just kind of hangs out. It's a lot of mid palate stuff. Like everything just kind of sits in the middle of my tongue. It's not hanging out in my chest a lot. It's not really sitting on at the front. Like when I take a sip, it just kind of all hangs out like in the middle of my mouth. This year for me, I feel like it's been the year of rise. I've got a lot of bourbon, that's clear. I've really gone into rise this year and I don't know what it is. One of my top rise of the year has been Stellan Fibonacci. Love that bottle. This is up there with Stellan Fibonacci. When this hits the market, I will be buying two bottles minimum. This is up there for me. I, I don't want to say it's perfect as far as far as a product goes, but it's, it's got the perfect amount of finish. I'm not wanting more. I'm not diving in for another drink. I mean, it just kind of slowly develops and there's light little layers on the tongue. It's complex, not too complex. I don't feel like I have to sit here and just think and think and think for notes, or it doesn't have me curious or confused. It's and it could be just you know, mind trickery. I know, I know that it's rum season, the Larosa Sherry Cask. That's like, oh, these are the flavors attributed with those, and these are the flavors attributed with rye. So this is kind of what I'm going to pull in together. But it, I mean, it's spot on with usually when you think rum finished rye, or most people think rum finished rye, they think Angel's Envy, which is pretty much just a rye whiskey blended with a hint of rum in it because I, they don't put straight rye whiskey. It's just rye whiskey aged in rum barrels. What I know, there there is still rum in those barrels when they get them. And if you drink it, it is a dessert rye. It is molasses all the way through, maple syrup, brown sugar. It's sweet. You're getting a, just a hint, just a small hint of that with the Hemingway. Then it goes into that dry berry, going into the lemon, the tea, uh, the molasses with a little bit of clove. And I mean, really is just kind of developing as it sits here. I'm going to go in for my last sip since we're almost to the end of the video. It is a great balance of viscosity with oils and tannins. It's not, like I said, it's not overly drying. There is a dryness to it, but not too much. If I were to break this down on a scale, this would probably end up being somewhere around a nine. And I, I will do a, I will do a review of this in the Pix app where, I, where if you have Pix app or if you don't, go, get, go download the Pix app and you will see what my tasting is through that profile on there and where it lands. Because like I said, so far, there's been three or four rides this year that have really blown me away, and this is one of them. They are, I mean, like still sitting on my palate. I don't know if it's because of the last sip or what, but it's, it's got a little bit of a waffle cone note with that sweetness. There's a nice rich caramel vanilla coming through. Like the longer it sits, the, it just kind of like slowly doles out but you're getting more of those standard rye notes that, that kind of follow through at the end of a finish where you get the grain, the spice, the floral, the tannins, and then it just kind of transfers into like, oh, there's the oak, there's the butterscotch, there's the caramel, there's the vanilla. It just slowly transfers into that and it does it so well. I want to say thank you to Hemingway Whiskey uh, for sending this my way. 
I am so excited to see everything coming from Jacob, his team, from Hemingway, and what else is down the pipeline for them. Can't appreciate them enough. So if you have had, or if you get a chance to try, or if you're excited about uh, what's coming next for Hemingway and Jacob, comment down below. Let's have a chat. Hope you guys have a great day. Cheers, y'all.